welcome to uh, uh, to uh, Robot Chores. I'm Steve Jennings from Grass Horse Studios, and uh, on Skype with me is uh, Chris Trees, uh, who is uh, where well, you're, well, you're up in Cedar Falls, right, Chris? Yep. Cool. That's and uh, Chris uh, has worked with us for years, and um, doing a lot of different uh, technology things from uh, the computers and the grid rendering uh, farm here, and uh, and robotics and the like. And so, anyway, that's what we're working on today is continuing to do this this puppet mover that we've been uh, kind of talking about and we, that we did in the first two episodes. Really, episode two had more of uh, more of it than the, than the first one. And so, uh, we're going to hop into it. And Chris, you can see my screen, right? Yeah, I can see your screen. I was going to join your YouTube so YouTube. I can see what you're pumping cool. out over YouTube too. All right, I'm gonna quickly save this too. I'm just gonna call it Puppet Mover. Uh, except I, YouTube hasn't, doesn't have you going live yet, I don't think. That should be, it says I'm going live on YouTube. And let's see. <clears throat> All right, so we're calling it Puppet Mover now. And Yay. this- there you are. Oh, Cool, shit. so when, once, uh, once this is archived up on YouTube, um, I'll be sure and put the link in there to uh, uh, Adafruit's original uh, sweeper um, sweeper uh, sketch that we have modified fairly heavily here, or at least it will be heavily modified. All right, so some of this I'm going to pull out right now. The next thing I want to do, let's see here. That The next thing we want to do here is, um, let's see here. I want to get rid of those two. Why is it not selecting that? Okay. Well, it's not there. Um, the next thing we want to do is be able to add. Now we know that. We know that. I don't, I don't even know if I even unplugged the um, servos from yesterday. I don't think I did. So uh, we'll see here. Hey, it's still running. What's it? Cool. Do you it's see a that? stress test. Yeah, you're doing stress testing. Yeah, so basically it did. It ran blink all night long, and so now it's running. Uh, it's running this code that we have, you know, right here. And so this is the code right here. And I think the next step that would be good is that if we can set it so that there's a random. Um, a random amount of movement for the the minimum and the maximum for each channel. And we could do it two ways. We could do it by um, setting like the servo position minimum like this, and then after this doing like servo, um, servo position and um, min rand right and we can say like oh that's going to be like 10 or whatever we're going to actually feed this probably into the sweeper because they would be different on an on an object level they would come in as different values and so um don't, I don't know forget why. your semicolon so. well and i have 10 written there but what i'm really thinking is that we have a pause min rand Right, and then so we might have a pause. This is looking. This is weird. Yeah. This. Yeah. Uh, I, I act, what's that? I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to figure out because truthfully, the random thing you could. You could do without with just your. You know, min max. You don't need to feed it in really, right? You're just wanting the sweep. I put it this way. The. Uh, I'd almost go with a different module. I mean, you're going to do it this way first, but I, I don't think that the, the only modification you want to make right now is instead of those being, you want the, is it the increment to be random or, you know, because that, that's how the speed is. Get, the update, you know, is firing what once every millisecond or so, you know. Right. So it's the evaluation of the, and I can't remember how the P, but, but yeah, so you're feeding it into the sweepers. Right. So, so down right here now, we have, this is the, this is the increment 
of like how often to update, right? This is the minimum placement and this is the maximum placement for each I, I for, thought, for well, sweeper let's, one. Let's and, make sure that's right. Is it is the fifteen the how often or is the fifteen is the fifteen how much to move? It's the interval. The the fifteen and the twenty five are the interval that comes in. And the interval is set to the update interval, right? And then down here, if the, and so if milliseconds minus the okay. last update is greater than the update interval, it's time to update, right? And so it yeah, runs so this. the random thing is, why don't you just do a random interval, right? Well, because then you're always doing the exact, then the character is always moving left. We will eventually want to do a random interval also, so that basically each movement is, it's moving left and right at a random amount within a certain about, without, within certain boundaries, and its movement is certain, is, is random. Too the interval, the interval is, is also random. And the, and then after, and then the step after that, I'd like it to where we, if we push a button, uh, there is a different set for like a more active movement. So it would be like the, the, the characters are laughing or they're excited or something. And you well, push know, the button see- and then it does, and then it has a second, it has a second set of things it can do. You follow? Yeah, no, I, I follow. And I just, uh, the, the, what I was trying to figure out is, uh, well, it's it's kind of like your naming convention and stuff like that because you can do the same sort of the same process you have for all your artifacts in the um, uh, you know blender, basically. You can do for you know the code functions and what you started to do is describe a bu- bunch of different functions. And my my point was is it well is it just like you're doing the can I think that was this morning right you did the uh, canis yeah. with a can and a cap and. You have those different elements, and you basically, you know, color that you, you you have separated those into different, you know, entities. Where really the 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 final object is Canis on stage, right? And then the variables are how she's, you know, moving on stage. But you don't you're you're pulling those templates in. You, see, you do the same thing with the code. Mm-hmm. So you, the thing is, is that the sweeper is a function. Now, I, I totally agree with modifying the sweeper or modifying a function, but then it's the, you know, renaming. But then because of the renaming, like on a sweeper, your discussion right now is do you want to have a random function within the sweeper? For that, I don't think you have to pass the random variable in. You see what I'm saying? Well, we, we could have it where it takes... Uh, servo position minimum and servo position maximum and divides them by two. And if it is underneath, if it is the lower half, then servo position man- minimum, like let's say it's, um, let's say it's 10 to 20, right? So the, 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 um, if you have 10 and you, if you have 10 and 20, add them together, divide them by two, that's 15. And so, so the the servo the, so the minimum amount it's going to move could be a random between, you know, ten and fifteen, and the maximum could be between sixteen and twenty, and it could it could operate that way where it's just like okay, I can move, I can move, and, and then maybe even we we could feed in that value to say okay, what's your what's the amount of percentage of random that you can have for your 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 minimum movement and your maximum movement. Because that way, if we're if every single time it loops through, it can go through and decide where it's it's, it's actually going to move, and so it will be at least a little bit more random than right now. Where if it's always moving from ten to twenty, and it's just going to whether it's going to move slower or faster, that's not going to look as random as if it might. Be. Sometimes it's fifteen to twenty, sometimes it's fifteen to eighteen, sometimes it's um, twelve to you know, 17, 19, et cetera. Do you get it? No, no, I get it. But what I was getting at is, okay, in my mind, the, like you're doing canis and the bones and all that stuff. So, and then you're also like, I, is this, uh, is this the, the intent is the, um, Judd Gavel or what, or. No, or, 
Okay, let me let me show you real quick. Let me show you. Okay, so let me back up then. Why are we doing this to begin with? We're doing it because we'd have like a cutout character like this, right? Okay. And right now on a bench, you would have two characters like this. And essentially, we want to have them do something like this as they're sitting in the, in the, in, in the background. Now, I'm not moving that fast or that much, but the idea is, is that it's like someone's holding them. So it's like slowly rotating left and right. Right, and so they're they're listening, and then they laugh. They go ha 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 ha, and then they, then they go back to the regular stasis of where they're like where they're like here. So this is random. This is rotating randomly, and on the bench there's two of them, right, and they're independently doing things on their own. And so all we're going to want to do is just attach a servo to the bottom to the base of this, and be able to do that, or or somewhere wherever the pivot's at, wherever we want the pivot at for the character, we will attach the servo so that it can just do that. And so then we don't have to have, you know, eight people sitting underneath the set for multiple hours while we're shooting. We basically have have a very standardized movement back there for for that back section. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Now that what I was getting at is the function that you're talking about. You do want to the you want the sweeper function as it is because you, you will want a sweep, you know, and the sweep is just, you know, moving. It's it's kind of, uh, you know, you're tweening, right? Right. So the and that's what I was trying to get at is that you've got a lot of knowledge in Blender and all that stuff, how to create those tweenings and stuff like that. So those functions eventually will match sort of those things that you are going to use downstream. Yeah, but this this is not. This character is not something that we, the, the what we're programming here right now, is to create the movement, but not to, um, but it's not something that we bring into Blender. It's some we don't even need to know what that movement is. It's just on autopilot. It's just running right along, and it's it has like basically two states. It has an excited state and it has a more of a rest state, right? And we're only worrying about the rest state right now. To make it look like okay, the character is just kind of sitting there and chilling out, and then when it laughs, it it moves more so. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Now on, but what you were starting to do is you were trying to overload this movement with another movement, you know, that you could just you know program down. And what I'm saying is that you're just overcomplicating it. It's kind of like the same thing. Is it? Oh, you could put you know. Uh, Canis's screw tap and all that stuff and all the vector, gra you know, whatever the UV, you know, stuff sure, onto sure. one thing, but you probably shouldn't because it, you know, the reusability of those. That's the only point I was making because you're starting to, you know, insert into this a bunch of more variables being passed up and down. So it's just more shit you got to track. And I'm going, well, really, what you want to do is you want a like you said you just said it i want you know two mode excited mode and you know just uh static mode but right. the static mode has a random in it so both, of them do. Uh, both have yeah, no, random yeah okay so now for developing you've got this the, the sweeper that works and you're comfortable with it you know i.e i think that well you know from a process point of view being steve but on the software side i said well shit i want that you know, can't put in a can somewhere as an asset that I can, you know, know that I can pull up and I don't have to fucking re remember everything again. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't, whoops, I, I misspoke there, <laughs> but I'll, uh, the, I don't have to remember the, you know, what I did. And then I have, a, you know, this is actually one of the things I was going to talk to you about. Now, what I like to do too, is extract that out and say, Hey, this, you know, there's a purpose for this function this is what we're going to use it in this is how we're using it and that's you know a documentation i don't want to go through that right now because it's not the part but what i was getting at is instead of trying to overload the sweeper with a, a bunch of functionality that you don't know how you're going to use you're not going to call this a sweeper anymore you're going to call it you know puppet justice peanut gallery whatever right okay now 
understand. And then, then it's really just like you're doing in Puppet Justice. You were copying a, a, a Canis thing that you do like, and you're starting to match the variables, which is the colors and stuff like that. You do the same thing, right? So so the, the structure and, you, you know, you're reduplicating the structure so you don't have to reteach yourself on all your na naming cl nomenclature and stuff like that. So now get back to reality. What you need to be doing right now is that all you want to do is make sure that you know how to make the sweeper run random, right? Right. To me, that, that means that uh, and nothing is truly random or, you know, you can't, there is random libraries, right? Right. Or do you want to have something that really isn't random, but it just has different timing, you know, I mean, just like tweening, you know, tweening. Yeah, well, that, that's what I said is I think that we want to have a combination of it's the position random for minimum, the, the random position for the maximum. And so you have to feed it two values, right? When you, whenever you do a rand function, you have to feed it two values and say it's in between this and this. And then same with the interval. I eventually want to have the a random, a random interval as well. And so that means that each of the that these three, then become six, and they become six values. And then the question is, do we want to do like a percentage of the amount? So it takes you know position minimum and multiplies it by 0.2, or by 1.2 or something like that. Or or do we want to um, just give it another value so it's in between 10 and 15 and this one's between in between 16 and 20 and so that's the the min a min b max a max b you know do we want to do it that way um yeah. my point is is in blender how you do this tweening and blender why not just match with that sort of functionality how, you know, because if you were doing it in the motion in blender how would you do it the, well, that's entirely different because this is not repeatable. This is not something that we intend to be re to to be repeated, right? This is something that we're only intending to um, uh, call up the, you know, basically we plug in the Arduino and it just starts moving the stuff. I, and, no, I know, but okay, I, here let me put it a different way. No, if, well, I'll if, show you in Blender. Like okay. if you have this, right? Okay. And let's say you're going to move this character. Right, and you have this is, and this is frame one. You insert uh, location, and then we're going to move it to over here. And I, and we insert location. Oops, we gotta move the, move this though at frame one twenty. We're gonna move it over here. We I, we insert location, now it moves between those two, right? And it's uh, it yeah. eases in and eases out. And if you want to control that more so, you go to the graph editor and you can select everything. You hit T and you can make it linear so it's a linear movement between the two. Or T, you can make, make it back to Bezier. Or you can make I it a constant. I don't see anything slightly random that you're you talking about. You mean a about. constant. Well, this is, that's because this is not, I'm not trying to randomize that movement. If we were, um, often I do something in, not usually in Blender, and I don't know if After Effects doesn't seem to be very nice lately. Um, but in After Effects, they have a random function of where you go through and, and you can make things move uh, randomly. And yeah, you feed it two values. Okay, well that that's my X point. Is you want to model it under something that you already are using, and I truthfully, I you know I I still like the idea that if Blender, if you could, even if you know, says oh it's random. Well, fuck it. Oops, sorry. Well, it's not. You know, nothing's totally random. And truthfully, nowadays it's easier to have the algorithm that simulates the random instead of actual random. That's that's my only point. But the interface that you're trying to model should be an interface thing that you would do the same in Blender. And I don't know. I'm listening. Yeah. No, I. I don't know what's going on I, here with this. 
I think it's because, oh, it's because I changed this and it doesn't, I need to reopen this real quick. Because I, I changed the size so you can save, see it. What's that? Yeah, the save, well, you can also save the, uh, saving your old stuff and starting a new one because you're going to be modifying it and that the old one does work. And Oh, I did already. Okay. Yeah, I did that right off the bat. Okay. Here's Puppet Mover. Okay. Okay, so now hopefully it'll start. There we go. All right. So you're, I'm going to do like an A and a B then. Yeah. And I'm not going to worry about the update interval yet. And, um... Wait a minute. Those are... The... I up? think you're you're doing it. You're doing minimum. It should be min A, max A, min oh, B, yeah. max B, same in the top. Because right now you're doing just duplicate variables. There you go. Same below. Okay. All right. And so then here. You can probably just, for now, put that there. <clears throat> All right, and I think it's just Rand. And I so we're gonna call what, like, oh, what's that? I don't know what functions you have available, because what are you pulling in? It's a C, C++. No, I know, but uh, well, go ahead and see if it calls. If it calls, you got it. A second, it's random. So we might need to, before I do this, then we might actually need one that isn't A or B. That is what it eventually ends up being. So then down here, That's still referencing that, and that's referencing that. Pos min, not referenced. And then down here, we're going to need to add some more to this, so 45 to 55. And then we'll say like 100 to 120, 70 to 80, and then we'll add like 150, oops, 150 to 180. OK. 
Okay. Let's see if it verifies. <clears throat> you track all that? Now I'm actually pulling up the online Arduino stuff just to the because uh, it just like I don't know how their random function works. So I was trying to figure out how their random function works. Oh, okay. Here I because um, you know this so. is what I pulled up here, and so random min and max, right? Well, actually, just uh, it's so recent. Where is it? I'll just uh. Adrenus CC reference. Okay. Then there's random seed, I guess, too. I don't know what that's about. But and here's like rand number. Okay, is that here? Is that you there? That's you. Okay, I see. It's just uh, it just picks a random number between the min and a max. Okay. So okay, so let's see if it'll compile here. It's uploading now. Okay, that looks exactly like that issue we had yesterday when the position. Okay, so yeah. I actually, what I don't understand is why are you adding these extra values? Because why don't you just, you know, when when the sweeper passes you in a min max, you just want to select a random number between them at that point. Because you have a start position and even end position, right? No, I know, but you have a start position and an end position, which is your maximum range that you want on the sweeper, right? So you just you're, you're just instead of going to because the way that works is it it it, it goes to a, the max and it resets to you know men what why not just have a you know instead of a sweeping it just picks a random position and goes to it right well because you you need you need an in point and an out point right and the in point is random and the out point is random. Uh, yeah, but see, uh, that that's actually why I was I just it doesn't make sense to me <laughs> for sure because you've got you know, the the servo has a range you can't exceed zero to one eighty I think or whatever definitely right. zero to three sixty right zero to one eighty one eighty okay so your min and your max is zero and one sixty and you want to basically simulate someone not quite moving you can set a, a what you're trying to set a like, oh, I'm going to only move from, you know, and there's something to do with the zero. Did you figure that out where you can actually pick a different number in there? And it, yeah, but, but the, yeah, the, but the this, sweep was trying to, the it, big problem we were having try, before yesterday was that having the, the position start within, within the range of what we needed things to start with. And, well, uh, the thing is, is that what I'm getting at is I don't think you need to sweep, which is the circle. It's just that it, at every time interval, you just pick a new position to be in, and you move to that position, right? Not, you know, the the other thing was incrementing up and down, it, which is why it was called sweep. What you want to do is, you know, take a, you know, a, a range uh, in the motion, which may be a little tighter because most people sit in a, the same boat and they only move. Their randomness is, is just in a pretty narrow range, right? Right. So that... So either, you know, this is where this is where I was even. I don't even know why you're using a random function. What you could do is just tighten your sweep range and your increment down to a very narrow range, and that you, you get a little bit of movement, right? You know, so it isn't really random. It's just it's just sweeping within a tight range versus a a, a pure. Or you you say no, I'm I want a random within that a random position within that range. 
you see what I'm saying? So that what you're doing is you're trying to do both, which, to, you know, to me, I start saying, well, fuck, why are you even calculating this shit? Because you, you can't, one. yeah, calculating this um, sugar. So what, what we're getting Stuff. at, though, is, is that basically in here that it runs through this update, and as it runs through this update, it is... It's inside this loop, and it's going to go one direction or the other. Okay? And I get what you're saying in that um, it could move from A, just from just A to B, and it picks a random number between A and B of what it's going to move to. Um, I get that. It's... But it is already kind of doing what it needs to do. You know, this is working. Um, maybe it's yeah. way more Okay, than... that's a better way to describe it. Of the sweeper thing that is working, what do you want to, what, what do you want to change about it? I don't think... I, now, I think this is what we want, but we just want to then do the same thing with the interval... And so that you can make the interval fast and short, and 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 so it can be random as well, right? So okay, then, I'm... you follow that? Yeah, I was just trying to find the uh, the stream again. <laughs> I lost it, in my clickies. Oh, okay. Uh, to see what you're doing. Uh, shoot, I don't see where. Ah, uh, that. Oh, that's the. Oh, and I just stopped. Oh, not moved. It must have had really close. Yeah, I... Oh, there it is. But that is random? Yeah. Because the one doesn't look random. The top one doesn't look random. But... Actually... Oh, it sort of does, I guess, doesn't it? Okay, well, no, I, it's you're doing fine. I just, I the only thing I don't I, like is I, I think you're adding more complication, and then I don't, you know, it's just if you come back this to even tomorrow, <laughs> can you use it? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that we probably need, I do need to document. And not only that, is it here, what you somewhere. know? How does that reflect into? Because I I know eventually all this stuff you know, is best if it's controlled through, uh, you know, blender mechanism. I, uh, this, now I'm having a memory about lots of years ago when we were doing this, we were actually trying to model it all in blender and then have the servos relate to that function. Right. And that's, that's still a good idea, but not for, not for what we're doing here because they don't, we don't need to replicate this movement later on at all well no i understand that but the uh the the like it's just your random you're you're making this code really complicated and i don't understand that you you need that sort of complication to you know to do a cycle is that that's that was my only but, but this is fine just go ahead and keep doing it because uh but it's just uh so you're saying that basically we could just use a sweep, and then you reload the sweep randomly. <laughs> or you put your, I'm just, in my brain, you know, because I've been going through all this testing and security and stuff like that, you want to keep everything, every kind of function as minimal and you kind of use that, whatever. But and that's what, you know, the, oh, the sweep works, but you thought the sweep was be too hypnotic. Well, you can run those different sweeps at different intervals and you'll get different motion, right? Because you got two, well, I don't know, are you, is each You'd have character going to have the same, uh, you know, one servo or two servos? One servo. Each character has one servo. Uh, but the, the processor, basically each time it gets done with a cycle, it just reloads a new, you know, right. interval or right. a new whatever. So, and my my question to you is: You're trying to 
Well, that's maybe that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to set all these variables up to make it random, you know. <laughs> so they're not all moving the same way. It would be cool if they all of a sudden, boom, that's another button that we push, and then they all start swaying back and forth exactly in sync together. That would be cool, too. I, but that's but not what we're trying to do no, right now. No, I know, but every time you're trying to – so you're trying to load this at the beginning and leave it alone. Yeah, let so it run it, for an hour. I think that the sweep, just the sweep with different intervals would get you there because those, those characters would have a – the issue with that is, is that you have you. That's that means that they're gonna go here to here, then here to here, then here to here, then here to here, then here to here. You know what I mean? It's always gonna be going the exact same distance, and that will look robotic, right? That's why you want to have like because you you can't make your hand do the exact exact same thing over and over and over again. We're trying to replicate someone's hand and we're not even getting the up and down movement, you know? We're just getting the left to right movement. But, um, and eventually we could maybe do the up and down movement, but I don't want to worry about that until we can get the, the left to right movement working right. Yeah, I, the, the, well, it's kind of like, well, over what time domain too? And, uh, you know, put it this way, you would have to put put it on for long periods of time, you know, to catch a, a slow movement. Or I, it, it doesn't matter, but th this will work fine. You can do that. It's just, it, it's just complicated is all. And that's fine, too, because it's not that big a chunk of code. Well, and, and the way that they wrote it here is, is that it's going to sweep A to B, A, a to B, then B to A, right? That's the way that they pretty much wrote this here. I suppose you could write it where, you know, and, you and before, it, before it, again. yeah, before, so it hits this update, right? So down here it goes, boom, run, run down here as in a, in this process, right? And so it runs up here and it goes A to B, then B to A, and then it goes back to here again and it says, oh, run again. And then it goes, yep. okay, well, let me look at my random the, the, I need to, I need to move between here and here, and we moved A to A to B and B to A, and then it goes out here and does this again. Now, yeah, but no, the the only thing you I don't think you got there is it it isn't it isn't doing that update. It's only it it checks to see if it needs to update again, and it only updates on the interval, right? If the inter if the interval between has expired, right here, which is does, another yeah. form of your randomness, is what I was getting at. And I and you were saying the same thing. What you were saying is that oh, I want that position to be random, but I don't think you can have that position. You do you want when you're loading the algorithm? You know, if if the if the robot is sitting in a chair, you you want to limit its motion. You know, maximum and minimum. So you know, would you want to randomize the max and you know max position do you see what i'm saying you want yeah. a you want a random location to move to within a constrained range not a random constrained range that's what i'm having a problem with so how do we go about that then so Okay, so let's just, hold on, let me save it and version up. So, let's see here. I'm going, to, I'll comment out the A and the B stuff. Okay, and um, okay, so we only have position minimum is what it's going to start at. And so position is equal or is, is basically increment. It sets up increment to be the initial position. 
or, or it adds increment to the initial position, okay? The servo, and sometimes the increment is positive and sometimes the increment is negative. Yeah, but let, right? let's, before you, before you get in there, the first if statement is, it's basically trying to decide whether to change the position this time slot. Right. Right, because this fires off every month. Now, the, the thing is, is that do you want, if you want to get a random, uh, you know, motion, you know, starting, you, you basically randomize the update interval. Right. Well, we don't want to do that yet, though, because we okay, want our fine. we want the range to move first before we're going to deal with the increments. Well, I think you not want the, the increment, but the the update I, interval. I think you want the position to be random, not the range. Right. The position. We want the position to be random. Its next position needs to be random. Okay, so let's. And so, you're you're saying that we don't. Okay, so we're gonna have servo position, and maybe this isn't min or max. This is just like a current. This is just pause. P O S. I actually, instead of you know the pause plus increment, comment that out and pause equals random. <laughs> basically okay but you have to feed the and i don't know what the but then the random it'd be a random value within that range so you put your min max so pause equals rand but it has to mm, hmm. no i i think you do the random of the of the values because it's just going to pick every time it wants to update it's going to just pick a new position in the range and go there Okay. And I think that's what you want. But those aren't, you know, the, yeah, okay. Now, the thing is, is that if you, now, now you got a problem if you get outside the range. See, it was sweeping, but you're, you're just going to say, oh, just go to the new value. Just go to new the value. But you got to make sure that you're not outside the range. And that's what this does here. Well, actually, I don't think you even need this anymore because the random already is doing your maximum and minimum. It's going to just pick a new value. So you don't even need the, the – you can comment out that because you don't need to reverse the direction. Yeah. Try that and see what happens. <laughs> Maybe we can get global thermal nuclear war. But in my brain, you just greatly simplified the whole thing so uh, I could digest it again in the future. Probably not using the increment anymore, are you? No. Nope. The thing is, is I'm afraid that it won't be able to, and then I'm out of time to update. Well, we'll see what happens. It looks like it's compiling. All right, it is compiling again. It's uploading now. It will be in a second. All right, so the issue I think is is that it's the millisecond isn't allowing it to go from one spot to another. And so um, basically you do need the oh, increments. It's still. too fast. It's too fast.